Hi there, in today's video we are going to talk about the four takeoff segments. This is one of the most common questions that you're gonna get asked the day of your pilot job interview. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. V1, rotate. Before actually seeing which are these four takeoff segments, where they start, when they finish, what is the aircraft configuration throughout each of these takeoff segments, we need to understand first of all why do we have these takeoff segments, why the takeoff flight path has been divided into segments. The main reasons that we've got these takeoff segments is for terrain separations. These takeoff segments will help you out to achieve and maintain the terrain separation in case an engine fails at the most critical point, which is the VEF. So at the VEF, the engine fails, you arrive at V1, you decide to continue, you continue, you take off. And the takeoff segments are specific segments that you need to respect based on aircraft configuration, trust setting, minimum climb gradient that you should respect in order to make sure that you maintain the terrain separation in the most critical scenario. The first important thing to remember the day of your interview, if the examiner will ask you, is that these four takeoff segments are based on an aircraft performance with an engine failure at the most critical point. And the performance, they don't take any benefits from the ground effects. That's why the first segment of this takeoff of these four takeoff segments starts from a screen height of 35 feet along your takeoff surface. So now let's analyze one by one these four takeoff segments. We're gonna talk about what is the configuration on each takeoff segment, which is the power setting on each takeoff segment, and what are the minimum climb requirements that you need to comply with for each takeoff segment. All right? So the first takeoff segment, as we said, since the aircraft needs to be out of the ground effects, starts from 35 feet. So you are on the takeoff run, you have an engine failure, at V1 you continue, so you take off. When you reach 35 feet above the ground, a screen height of 35 feet is when your first takeoff segment starts. The first takeoff segment starts at 35 feet screen height and finishes when you retract the landing gear. So for the purpose of the first takeoff segment is a gear retraction. Okay, this is very critical because you, we have this first takeoff segment because you want to reduce the drag as soon as possible because remember you're on a single engine condition. The power that you have set during the first takeoff segment is the takeoff power, which could either be the toga or the flex temperature or the assumed temperature in case of the points. Okay, so they again the configuration is takeoff flaps initially with gear down, but during the first takeoff segments you retract the gear and you have the takeoff power. Okay, the climb gradient required for this first takeoff segment is zero basically. There is no a specific climb gradient required for the first takeoff segment. Once your gear is retracted, you start the second takeoff segment. The second takeoff segment starts from the gear retracted all the way up to a minimum acceleration height of 400 feet. Guys, this is a minimum acceleration height. Many airlines, they change this to an higher acceleration height. Okay, so for example, some airlines, they use 1,000 feet above the aerodrome level. But the minimum height at which you can actually start the acceleration for flap retraction is 400 feet. So the second takeoff segment starts from the end of the first takeoff segment when the gear was retracted all the way up to a minimum height of 400 feet. The thrust that you have during the second takeoff segment is still the takeoff power. Okay, so it's either the toga, assumed temperature, or flex. The speed at which you should fly the second takeoff segment, so the climb from the landing gear up, the, from the landing gear that's actually retracted all the way up to 400 feet, is the V2. The minimum climb gradient required for a twin engine aircraft during the second takeoff segment should be 2.4%. So your aircraft needs to achieve this climb gradient of 2.4% with a single engine condition. And the configuration, we said gear up, but with the takeoff flaps still set. 
So you reach the 400 feet and that is the end of your second takeoff segment. And you go into the third takeoff segment. The third takeoff segment is made in order to make sure that you can accelerate the aircraft and retract the flaps. Because again, your target is to reduce the drag since you are a single engine conditions. And also, of course, maintain and keep the separation from the obstacle. Once you arrive at 400 feet above aerodrome level minimum, guys, minimum, you can start the acceleration and retract the flaps. You want to do this as soon as possible because again remember you are in a single engine condition so you really want to reduce the drag as much as possible. And the third takeoff segment starts from a height, a minimum height of 400 feet all the way down to flap retracted and maximum continuous thrust set on your ranges. And since you are leveled off in order to retract the flaps and accelerate the aircraft and set the maximum continuous thrust, so you, your power setting is gonna go from the takeoff power to the maximum continuous thrust, in this segment you can actually fly leveled off. So there is no minimum climb gradient required as long as the fourth segment that starts from the moment you have flaps up and maximum continuous thrust set up to 1,500 feet, in that segment you respect 1.2% of climb gradient for a twin engine aircraft. So guys, as you can see, depending on each takeoff segment, you have a different flap and gear configuration. Also, you have a different thrust setting. The, the limitation of setting the MCT is because the engines, they cannot fly for a long time on a toga, on a maximum takeoff thrust. Because if you do that, the uh, remaining engine is going to go into an overstressed situation. So there is a limitation set by the manufacturers that says if you, during takeoff, you set the takeoff thrust, let's say you need a lot of thrust that day, so you go full thrust for the takeoff. That full thrust, you can keep it, it depends. Usually it's between 5 and 10 meters. It can change depending on the aircraft manufacturer. For example, Airbus says if you have two engines operative, you can maintain toga the full takeoff thrust for a period of five minutes. However, if you have an engine failure conditions, this limitation goes up to 10 minutes because it gives you a bit more time before you actually need to set the MCT. This is more applicable when you're flying into high terrain regions. Okay guys, I hope you understand a little bit better what are these four takeoff segments. Remember, this is, could be a, one of the questions that the examiner will ask you the day of your pilot job interview. Remember that if you need an help for your pilot job interview preparation, I made a very complete and full course available on pilotclimb.com. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will help you out. I wish you a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Check, we can set to 7-0 please.